130 orang satu hmm. per tahun banyak sekali banyak untuk sekali. dapat SD kah ada kondisinya ada hmm. uh, publikasi di jurnal bereputasi ah. putus kasihnya <laughs> pasti berat 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 iya yeah. di sini juga ada kondisi harus ada dua artikel yeah. satunya harus ada tingkat internasional jadi susah sekali dapat kondisinya betul betul Jadi masing-masing universitas harus membuat jana. Ya. Kalau <laughs> di, di, di Jepang kalau tidak salah uh, konferensi juga ya Ibu ya? Iya. National Joint Lectures Associate Profesor Ayami Nakaya dari Hiroshima University dan para peserta semua yang kami hormati. Selamat siang, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Puji syukur kita panjatkan karena berkat rahmatnya kita masih bisa berkumpul untuk bersama-sama mengikuti International Joint Lecture dengan tema lokal curriculum meski dilaksanakan secara online. Semoga kita semua dalam kondisi sehat selalu. Recording Saya, Karunia Tiara Fani, mahasiswa program studi teknologi pembelajaran, akan menjadi Master of Ceremony sekaligus moderator pada rangkaian acara International Joint Lecture pada hari ini. Acara ini merupakan bagian dari rangkaian kegiatan pengukuhan ejang profesor Fakultas Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Negeri Malang. Sebelum kita memulai rangkaian acara pada hari ini, mari kita bersama menyanyikan lagu Indonesia Raya dengan kitab sempurna.
Tema perkuliahan pada hari ini adalah lokal kurikulum yang akan dibawakan oleh Associate Profesor Ayami Nakaya dari Hiroshima University. Lokal kurikulum atau yang biasa dikenal dengan muatan lokal di Indonesia adalah salah satu bidang yang menjadi penelitian Ibu Nakaya di tahun 1995 dan 1997. Ibu Nakaya saat ini menjabat sebagai Associate Profesor di Hiroshima University dengan fokus penelitian dalam Global Citizenship Education, Peace Education, and Education in Indonesia. Oleh sebab itu, sungguh merupakan kesempatan yang sangat berharga karena pada saat ini kita dapat bersama mendengarkan paparan tentang lokal kurikulum dari Ibu Nakaya. Kepada para hadirin, saat ini dipersilakan dapat memberikan poin diskusi ataupun pertanyaan karena di akhir perkuliahan kita akan membuka sesi diskusi dan tanya-jawab supaya perkuliahan hari ini semakin kaya dan mendalam. Konnichiwa Ibu Nakaya, apa kabar? Konnichiwa Ibu Tiara, baik-baik saja, terima kasih. Baik, terima kasih untuk waktunya Ibu Nakaya. Bagaimana Ibu, apakah sudah siap untuk share ya. screen dan juga memaparkan materi? Ya, sudah. Baik, terima kasih Ibu. Tanpa lebih lama lagi, mari kita simak bersama materi mengenai lokal kurikulum dari Associate Profesor Ayami Nakaya. Kepada Ibu Nakaya, kami persilakan. Ibu Tiara bisa melihat? Bisa, Ibu. Saya sekarang jadi... Sudah lengkap? Sudah, Ibu. Oke. Okay. Terima kasih banyak. Uh, selamat siang. Konnichiwa. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Hai. Terima kasih banyak diberikan kesempatan seperti ini, Bapak-bapak dan Ibu-ibu dan mahasiswa-mahasiswi di Universitas Negeri Malam. Nama saya Ayami Nakaya dari Hiroshima Universitas. Terima kasih Ibu Tiara uh, memperkenalkan saya. Mungkin saya tidak usah uh, lanjut uh, introduction uh, about myself. Eh, jadi langsung saya mulai, <laughs> mulai presentasi uh, kelas saya. Uh, kemarin, Uh, saya sudah mengajar, uh, men-sharing eh, menggunai muatan lokal, lokal karikiram di Jepang. Jadi, eh, yang orang yang sudah dengar presentasi kemarin mengerti konteks dan background, wah, uh, kenapa saya uh, memfokus muatan, muatan lokal, eh, lokal karikiram. Eh, hari ini saya eh, bicaranya tentang Indonesian case, tapi Eh, kemarin saya bicaranya tentang eh, Japanese case. Eh, kalau ada pertanyaan nanti saya menerima dan bisa saya ingin eh, diskusi dengan mahasiswa-mahasiswi mengenai mata lokal di Indonesia. Eh, Mau saya me, karena presentasi eh, PPT-nya dalam bahasa Inggris karena saya mengajar di eh, graduate school juga eh, saya mempresentasi dalam bahasa Inggris. Minta maaf. Eh, local curriculum in Indonesia. So, uh, from the first page, eh, the contents is about the modern local history and also the some controversial and successful cases and what we can understand the merit and demerit of local curriculum in Indonesia and what we can learn from that and how I we can improve the curriculum itself, uh, not only in Indonesia but also in Uh, in the world. So from the first uh, page, I said, and so what is the uniqueness of modern local, local curriculum in 1994 curriculum in Indonesia? Before 1994, there are no room. Local people can create their own curriculum, as you know. So from 1992, there is a movement to improve the curriculum itself and uh, how to improve it and contain include the local content so that the, the outcome is a modern local as a curriculum in that day so modern local is a cause <laughs> maybe you know everything but i i try to 
uh, show and introduce from the outsider's perspective. And modern local is a course of study introduced in the curriculum 1994 and who developed it. And at that time, each provincial education office could uh, develop the curriculum and not schools, not, uh, not district, small district peoples, just a provincial level. And aims is improving the local attachment and knowledge and skills to know their local and suit for local needs, situations, and development. At that time, uh, when 1994, I was Estiga, so doctor degree student. And before that, I know that. And as a master's student, I started to research about the uh, local curriculum in Indonesia. So when I was master's student, I visited the SAT curriculum, uh, curriculum development center in Jakarta. And I wait for a long time to, to catch, to, to get all syllabus, local curriculum, modern local from the every but that time, 27 province, 27 provincial local curriculum. In that time, maybe you cannot imagine the situation, but no internet. Uh, to, to, <laughs> to make call with a handy phone, there is no handy phone, just a, a traditional uh, telephone only. So very, very difficult to catch the information. And so I, I just wait for that curriculum delivered from the each a province. And after I collected all the curriculum and I uh, analyzed it, uh, maybe there, there is very few people who have uh, all modern local curriculum as a document in that time. And from I examine all the documents, uh, local modern local curriculum from all province, province uh, I now I uh, summarize and to show you. And that time principles of development is there are three. So one is natural environment and plants, animals, and humans uh, and places they are living and such as land, water, river and sea and air. And local agriculture and fishers have uniqueness based on the natural environment. And second principles is a social environment, a social system which includes rules among people in the area to support each other as individuals, as groups to live together with respect to each other, like Agoton Loyam. And number three, cultural environment, cultural matters in certain area. So there are the, so many contents and this is from the na national, a kind of national guidebook to develop the local curriculum. And the contents include local culture and local language and local industries. So these are the model from the PUSAT curriculum, curriculum development center. And so this is a, a actual uh, subject in modern local from the all provincial modern locals. So I could define the four categories by functions. So even the model, there are three, uh, three principles, but uh, from the perspective of functions, I can I could categorize four. And first is maintaining and developing local culture. So local language, local habits, art of self-defense, uh, poems, local games and literature, uh, traditional sports, local songs, traditional plant, uh, painting, and carving, and local traditional dances. So there are uh, in total in nationwide Indonesia 71 subjects they uh, settled. And number two functions is improving special skills and ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cooking, bamboo, Latin work, and textile, needlework, dressing, pottery, uh, interior, batik, etc. So there are 42 subjects. Uh, and number three is daily English. Uh, I was so surprised why they, they teach English as a modern local. Uh, 70, uh, 17 provinces set the English, daily English. So I asked several people, so they said, uh, because English is very important for the tourists. So I understand. So th that is a kind of future uh, local industry. So number four is ability for self, so own business, so entrepreneurship. 
so agriculture, fishers, fruit growing, stock breeding, uh, breeding and computer administration, tourism and navigation. So, so in the sea. So there are 19 subjects. So there are a lot of various kinds of subjects. So, but before moving to the successful story, I, I want to make sure the aim. So first time when I see the local curriculum, I was so excited because uh, until that time, our so Japanese and other countries, our foreign countries, researcher about Indonesian education, they always focus on the Panchashira educations and nationalism and patriotism, uniqueness in Indonesia. But from that curriculum, the orientation are totally changed. So I was so excited because I I, I really interested in the the students, a real student in Indonesia. I, I have a lot of friends from Indonesia when I was at Satu. Uh, so they have a very, they have very talented and very interesting and uniqueness and they have, a, they have a rich knowledge about their traditional culture. But the education is very nationalized. So I was, I was so curious why they can still keep their ethnic identity and how they can make balance uh, national identity and local identity and how they can keep their local identities. And my, my friends, uh, many of them are from Java, but uh, so they, they can dance and sing a song and they can speak Javanese. So I was so curious. And uh, when I, wrote the dissertation about Matan local, my supervisor asked, whose idea? Why Matan local, local curriculum could be started in the nationalistic country political systems? So I also wondered, but everybody says, uh, minister, <laughs> minister said, minister's ideas. So I was so curious and I decided I need to confirm that. So I tried to find the, find the minister, but as you know, because there are no internet, no address, I, I don't have any contact and contact address or network to meet him. So I, I searched and I asked many people where he work. And when I was the, when I write, writing the dissertations, he already, uh, back to his university, Indonesia University. So I just go to the Indonesian University, uh, university of Indonesia and just ask to the guardman where he is. And luckily I could meet him at that time. So when I asked to the guardman, he said in back, in the back, you can see him. <laughs> so that is, miracle that was miracle and i can directly interview him and discuss about the modern local and minister said the uh, former minister said uh, of course actually his idea he he was a, a, a psychologist and he really worried about young people of indonesia they lose their local identity ethnic identity and individual identity too they they lose their, because they lose their local identity they really move want to move to the urban area and to earn more and more and more and they forget what he is what she is and what uh, he and she need to improve or take care for their own well-being so from the psychological perspective, he really wanted to introduce the modern local in Indonesia. So I love his history uh, stories and I, I really love the modern local from that time. Of course, from the beginning, I love that idea. So anyway, I back to the modern local again. So after I got this, I, uh, during that time, I visit many places because modern local is various and local context are very in Indonesia. So I, I thought I should not research only in Java because Java is mainland and very important places for many peoples. But 
to keep the uh, locality, I should see the other places. So I, uh, first of all, because I was a student in Ikiban at that time, just one year for research. So I stayed in Bandung. So Bandung is a base, uh, a base for me. So I study about the mountain local in, in uh, Bandung, but uh, I moved to the West Kalimantan and West uh, Sumatra too. So I could see the successful cases in Bandung. So in West Java, traditional craft class, a class made students and uh, parents get pride of work, their work, home industry, and also improve their skills. It means that time in Tashik Malaya, they have a, a <laughs> cap, poppy, uh, with Latin and very traditional cloth. Uh, so they, so each uh, Ibtanga, but uh, they, they create a traditional craft, a cap with Latin and bamboo leaf. And those things, even they work from morning until night, but they could earn less than one dollar, less than one dollar. Even they work hard whole days, and sometimes children also help her, uh, help mother. But the arm uh, is very, very small, and they could get a pride. But because of the introduction of the tragic craft, uh, many teachers visited to the home industry uh, Ibutanga and asked them how to create it and what is a better way they discuss with teachers. So sometimes uh, Ibutanga also uh, visited and invited to the schools and they show how to create and students learn about that from their mothers in school. School is very special places in the especially in the rural area school is a public place and very higher place and cultured place and they respect they should respect the teachers but the time my mother and his mother also invited by schools and teach us his or her uh, skills in front of students as teacher, volunteer teachers. So that time they, they really improve their pride of their work and also improve their skills. So that is, I think, uh, very good success, very good cases to introduce the home industry in Matan local. And another case is in West Kalimantan, uh, I'm, uh, I stayed in Pontianak and also the a uh, uh, little bit Pudalaman, uh, uh, Sintan also. The time there is a one class tourism and traditional custom classes. And these classes, uh, there is one very good class uh, decrease the discrimination against uh, mon uh, minority uh, within the province. In West Kalimantan, as you know, there are so many Dayak people as a minority, even they are, the, the first residents in Kalimantan, but after after coming to Mulayu peoples and after coming to uh, other uh, Chi not Chinese, uh, the Bugis peoples mm -hmm. and so many different kinds of peoples are migrant to the Kalimantan. And that time with Kalimantan in Pontianak, 11% are uh, uh, Tianfo, uh, Chinese, uh, Indonesian Chinese peoples, and also the uh, Dayak peoples and they are minority in that places. But uh, minority is okay, but there are very serious uh, discriminations. So I also could see sometimes the Murayu students, Mohina uh, Mohina they they call her long house, long house, and dark and long house. So this kind of very. Uh, bad words uh, give to the minority students too in those uh, big junior high schools. But after introducing this tourism tradition custom, and I, I observed many classes, but one teacher, he is, uh, he is from Dayak ethnic group, and he is a very 
important core member of committee uh, keeping remain the the Dayak uh, culture and customs. And his talking is very fantastic. And he could told a very interesting and very beautiful story about the Dayak habits. Mm -hmm. And when, when the boy want to marry with a girlfriend and boys come to the girlfriend's house and she already knows she loves her. And she also loved him, but she cannot, the girl cannot go out from her, her room because the formally the boy should talk to the father first and get a permission first. And then mother asked to the her and asked, uh, so I, the girl can answer to the mother and the mother <laughs> talk to the father and father talk to the uh, boyfriend. So this kind of a habit the, with a very fantastic and unique and interesting stories and students really, really, how can you say, uh, happy to hear that. And there are uh, similarities and differences and why difference and what is the meaning of the differences and how beautiful it is. So they could understand from his, storytelling. So this class is success to decrease the discrimination against the minority groups and also the tourism. Even they have a rich cultures from the various ethnic groups, but uh, actually the very exotic clouds from the Dayak peoples are the valuable in the tourism industries. And I also buy a lot of bought many craft from the Dayak exotic uh, cultures. So students, Marayu and the Java peoples, migrants, understand how valued by outsiders to the minorities uh, ethnic culture. So this is very successful cases. But at the same time, there are controversial cases. The, the first one, West Sumatra, uh, I want to show you the, my, my picture first. I went to Muntawe, Kuproa Muntawe. Do you know? Can you raise your hand? Have you ever visited Kuproa Muntawe? No. Saito Sensei, can you count? <laughs> if you, you, you just show the icon. If you know or visited the Mun this is very small island. There are so many small islands, and I, I visited one small island uh, in the Kuproa Muntawe. And that time I stayed in uh, Asraman Putri with uh, girls. And can you see the 30 years ago, my, my face? <laughs> this, is, this is me. And the boys uh, lived in these small houses because they cannot. Uh, so they are the junior high school students. Of course, they are adult now. And at that time, junior high school students, they cannot come from their houses because there are so many, uh, there, are so, there are no roads actually. So they need to come to school. They, they take the two days. So they should, uh, they should live together in the small house or the, the uh, dormitory. And I, I stay with them and I don't have any castle, just with a cup, newspaper for, for sleep. And uh, we cook together. We can eat just two times a per day in morning, eight o'clock before starting class. And we, we just eat a banana and a, a big potatoes and no bless, <laughs> no nashi, <laughs> and no ikan and daging. Uh, we, we just eat this every day. Uh, even we can catch, we can catch a, a fish, the fishing from the fishing, but they directly sell that to get our money because they don't have any coins because uh, they, are sub they also get a support from the parents. The parents can come to school and dormitory to bring the bananas and the food, but once a, once a month, but they don't have money. So they cannot pay for the electricity, but electricity also very limited, but they, they should pay the 300 rupiah. 
hanya 300 rupiah tapi mereka tidak punya. Jadi uh, untuk dapat uh, for get, getting the money they sell the fishes if, even they got but they cannot eat it and uh, sell that and get a much more money from the uh, the residents but residents also not many so they cannot earn money a lot too. Anyway, so these are the their uh, daily life at that time, and the, the schools also broken and not so beautiful. And but they are so can you see they are so conscious and serious to run, and so so in this class, the Matan Loka is very controversial, and they had a uh, Matan Loka as a compulsory subject. Minangkaba uh, word. So in Kupuramuntawe, they are not Minangkaba. They are ethnic group of Muntawe. But they cannot study about Muntawe and Muntawe culture or history or language, anything. They had forced to master Minangkaba uh, culture and language. So the majority because the, the in the provincial compulsory subject is Minangkaba word and it contains a majority ethnic group culture and it uh, made minority of Minang Muntawe people students feel inferior and worthless of themselves. In one class, I was so sad to see one boy said to complain to the teacher, teacher, why you teach us? Minang, uh, not uh, Muntawe, but Minangkaba word. We are so wet to studying our culture. We are proud of our culture. And when I heard a uh, modern local will start, we guessed we will study about Muntawe. But actually, no, there is a Minangkaba word subject. And teachers, there are 12 teachers at that time in the schools. 11 teachers from Sumatra Barat, uh, Padang, or Bukitinggi. So 12 from the 12 teachers, 11 teachers from the mainland. And only one teacher originality, uh, original of the Muntawe Island. So teachers, every uh, Minangkabo teachers teach Minangkabo. And if student cannot master Minangkabo language or cultures, they cannot up to the next grade, cannot graduate to. It was so sad things for them. So I was so upset. I really want to cry with him. But as a researcher, I should think from the various perspective. So I see, I thought, I need to know the students need and students how can I say uh, opinions from from many students? So I distribute a questionnaire, and uh, uh, no, 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 no. I I try to I wanted to questionnaire, but there are no copy machine. So I just write questions in the blackboard. And how do you feel to study Minangkaba word? So they said they they write a notebook. Uh, so. They, so I, I could get the answer, and half of them really like to study Minangkaba word. The reasons are like this. Uh, one student said that is like a mutiala, like a pa. That is a new world, new language, new culture, and very interesting. So that is like a mutiala, one said. And as I said, uh, if I can learn this and master it, and we can, I can get the some job, better job in mainland. Oh, I see, I understand. So half of them, same as a boy client, uh, so they, they don't like and they cannot get any uh, values to study Minangkaba. So there are half and half. So I understand, but still, I feel uncomfortable and upset. And after finishing that research, back to the Padam, uh, Sumatra, mainland, and directly go to the uh, education board. And I complain about the situations. 
This director said, wait, <laughs> wait, think about their future. We also understand they have their own culture. But it, without mastering Minangkabau culture and language, they cannot get job in mainland and they cannot get earned and they cannot develop their own local area. So to accept this opinion, I needed several years and until now I cannot get a best answer. But after 20s, I visited again the same schools, what happened. When I went there 28 years ago, that time there are no road and there are just three television in the island because there are three very small shops and they have a television. And in the island, there are only two trucks, no taxi, no bike, just truck. So if I want to move, I, I take a big truck and back with us some, some mud. But after the 20 years, there are city, there is another city, there is a, some kind of small town. There are houses, the mosque, and uh, some, uh, some other schools too. My junior high school also at that time, only one junior high school, but after 20 years, there are three junior high schools in that island. So after 20 years, of course, they, maybe they got some, some support from outside or from the central government, but I think my love mate, my, my, my love mate, roommate, that time, junior high school students, she, she said, her brother who have a job in mainland, he sent money to her education. Because of this support, she could move, uh, maybe she could uh, go up to the high school in, in other island, and with a bigger island. And finally, those people who are supported from the main island, like uh, relatives or family members, they got, um, they got the money and get educations and got a better job and the money returned to the small island and they could develop their island. So they lost some years, uh, at least 10 years, because from 94, they started Minangkaba World until 2006. 2006 curriculum, it moved to the school-based curriculum. So they said they stopped the Minangkaba World class in the schools. And after that, they, they started uh, in elementary school directly, they started Muntaway class in, uh, as a modern local, but junior high school, it takes time to create um, uh, docu materials. Uh, sub textbooks so it takes a time a little bit but uh, 10 years they are forced to study Minangkabo but at least they can they could catch the different way to survive so how do you assess that process I cannot uh, get a good answer now but that is uh, that was uh, a little bit controversial cases I think so do you want to repeat this case or not for your future or for present? Anyway, next one. West Java again, Bandung. There is a compulsory uh, subject, the Sunda language. Maybe uh, some of you are Sunda people, so maybe Minangkaba also. Uh, I, I don't say Minangkaba is bad. That is a structure, social structure. And Sunda also majority in the uh, West Java. So this is also structure and uh, social structure. And a provincial compulsory subject uh, imports a burden. So Sunda language compulsory as a compulsory subject, it imports a burden uh, immigrants and other ethnic group students. So the, it also same for minority or ethnic group students, as ethnic group students, if a Sunda language become a compulsory, 
they should get our more than 60 points to graduate. That is very hard for, for them. But of course, it is valuable to survive soon the world. So how do you think about it too? But at least what I can say is we need to set a selection as a human right. Who selected? Of course, student. So if students don't have to select that way, I, I, I think this is a kind of operations. A little bit kukura-san. So these are the reality of Matan Roka uh, in 1994. But from that uh, cases, we can learn a lot. Okay, so after 1994 curriculum, move to the uh, 2006 curriculum, school-based curriculum. But as you know, before that, th there is a 2004 curriculum, uh, competency-based curriculum. I loved it a lot. And my, my really near friends, friends but very older than me, but she develops a uh, she developed the competency based curriculum 2004 and she's proud of uh, her her job and after graduation and get a SDGA from the Australia she really wanted to improve the curriculum and create a, a competency based curriculum and plot curriculum but actually the curriculum could not get a formal sign from the minister and gaga then started the 2006 school-based curriculum. So developer at that time, so from the perspective of Matan Roka, developers, uh, each school, as, as you know, not only Matan Roka, but also as a curriculum too. So all curriculum could be developed by, arranged by the schools. It is also very exciting things, but troublesome for the teachers too, of course. And the explanation of Roka at the time in the handbook of curriculum development and shifted from Daira to Linkungan. The first time, 1984, at that time, they, they, they use the word Daira, administration regions. But the next curriculum, you try the word Linkungan surrounding our neighbors, so more small and more uh, meaning shift to the locality. And consideration more for needs and situation of students and local area. So Minan Kabao case and ethnic minorities in the Sundanese class, it, it this kind of uh, a bad if the school established the compulsory subject, the same things happen for the minority groups. Anyway, so consideration more for the needs and the students. And in 90, uh, 2006, for competency for graduation like this, elementary school students can show their attachment and interest towards their Linkungan. And junior high school student can utilize Linkungan with responsibility. And high school student can utilize Linkungan productively with responsibility. So this curriculum improves the sense of contributions of local development. Okay, and if I see the social studies in this curriculum 2006, and regarding local, so in elementary schools, understand the role of this is very interesting organizations. Uh, I mean, Trubalik uh, in Japan and now also uh, in Indonesia, also. Uh, <laughs> usually, the order from the very near nearest places from the family, local community, and the town and city and country and world. But at that time, social studies from the a lot of Indonesia in global era. So it is interesting for me. And next is living issues and social problems. So think about the community, a society, and in high school level, and they in the geography, they study about the rural area and the city and so this this order is a little bit uh, interesting and dramatic. Uh, so that's uh, there is a uniqueness is there is a high possibility to improve the student responsibility and motivation based on their local attachment to participate 
social activity to develop the local area. And uh, having a micro and macro perspective and na national and local development. So they have a whole perspective, holistic perspective, and they can't catch what I should do. And but there are no guide, uh, guidebook or textbook for teaching it uh, systematically. That is, uh, I guess, this is difficulties for the teachers. And therefore, the success depends on the teacher's creativity at the time. And that during that period, uh, I select the several remote and local in several cities. And case one is local curriculum by Municipal Board of Education. This uh, city level, the Ambu city, create a culture of brotherhood. Uh, do you know that some uh, there is an ethnic conflict in Ambu? I believe everyone knows that. Uh, they have the a religious conflict 1999 to 2004 and after that conflict uh, many international organizations and including Japanese organizations enter to the Ambon city uh, to, to support to rebuild the trust and normal social systems so at the time I was also invited as a specialist of JICA and JICA is a Japanese uh, kind of international corporations by the government uh, as a short short period expert to develop a, a peace education curriculum as a modern local i was invited at the time but i reject to do the task I, I mean i don't want to i cannot create develop the local curriculum for them because this is very sensitive issues and i don't know the uh um, Ambon people's history and culture and real, they're feeling now. And with us know that outsiders should not give suggestion. But at the time I have a lecture to many peoples, uh, how to create modern local and what is uh, unsuccessful and controversial cases and what is a principles and what kind of point we need to take care. So, then I, I just support like this from the side and also uh, I support the school management to build up the peace culture in the school. So I visit the many high, junior high schools and to discuss with a local community member and teachers and principals to develop their own peace culture in within the school. So school management, school curriculum. And back to this local curriculum again. So they have uh, a, a curriculum culture of brotherhood because they felt they lost their brotherhood relationship between the small ethnic, small village and other small villages. In Ambon, there are 40 from Ambon exists. Uh, I have a history book and I study about the history when they, the Ambon city when 16th century, just 500 residents and Hollandy peoples come to the Ambon island and the city, uh, the town become bigger. And uh, until 19th century, they have a 40 uh, kingdom this head, but kingdom is a very small group, resident group. And these groups have their own rules and they have a, some relationship brotherhood. So they uh, try to remember or rebuild this kind of brotherhood in that city. So the culture of brotherhood curriculum includes Ambon culture and history, and it aims to improve their plot of ethnic identity and local attachment, which are destroyed by the conflict and increase the trust among Ambon people to prevent new conflict. And Ambon language, all the tales, Ambon songs for understanding local values to make that image a peace and the way of building peace. And especially in that uh, curriculum and textbook, it emphasized the existence of traditional contract, culture of mutual support between different religion, uh, religion groups. Uh, this is, I, I don't say this is a success or controversial because 
there is one class I I I visit many classes and observe that in one junior high school after the group discussion and make presentation by each group what is brotherhood and brothership and after one group introduce how brotherhood is important in Ambon so the uh, listeners as a student asked to the group uh, how do you think that brotherhood or brothership is still remained in what kind of uh, abstract uh, activity or action sure. and the presenters answer to the students now they have the the habit if the christian has a christmas party they give the food to the Muslim people. And uh, it also, the Muslim people also after Ramadan time, they, they give a food, present as something to the Christian peoples. And they can each, uh, they can support each other when they build a uh, church, a mosque. So this is common, not only the Ambon city. So we can see in, in Java and other places too. So there, example is a very abstract and not concrete and they cannot answer in, in good way. I, I mean, that is a very surface, just an activity, but how about the trust from the mind? They cannot answer. So from that scene, I thought the traditional culture of brotherhood is meaningful, for the new students and new peoples, new generations, but creating new traditions also very good things. So if they continuously keep to think about the brotherhood as a new and traditional hybrid culture, maybe it will be good. But anyway, that time, many, uh, many teachers try to improve the peace culture uh, within the students and now they stop this uh, subject. And, uh, I, I researched this city, Ambon City, 10 years. So more than 10 times I visit Ambon City to research about their situations. But after the project, international cooperation project, I, I every year search and have our data and share with a community people and parents and how to prevent the next conflict, we discuss about that. And next, case two, uh, local curriculum developed by NGO. This also the Peace Mother, West Kalimantan, uh, multicultural education. So if you want to, so usually I, I write the papers in Japanese because my mission is to introduce the edu Indonesian mother to the Japanese people, but uh, currently I, I write some papers in, in English. So if you want to read, please such that. Uh, with Kalimantan, they have a much culture education. Uh, the background is there is ethnic conflict in 1906, 99, and 2001. The intention of this textbook I analyzed is start stating that uh, aside from the wrong governmental policies, the existence of violence culture in one's society is also cause of ethnic conflict. And then the textbook was created in the attempt to develop a peace culture through understanding and respect of different culture. And much cultural education could make students understand the past and the much culture situations currently. And uh, two issues were identified there. And one is stakeholders. Uh, so two issues were identified by my research and my analysis. And there are two challenges. And one is stakeholders' trauma and anxiety toward teaching negative past. So there is a, a textbook, but much culture textbook, but teachers very worried about teach about that because they have trauma and students don't know the conflict, but they, uh, their family, maybe some are injured, some are killed, some are, some killed. I don't know, uh, they don't know. So they have worried about that. So there is an anxiety and many 
uh, principles, even though they are recommended by the, the Board of Education, but it, it was just recommended, not compulsory. So they could select as a school-based curriculum. So many teachers reject, not reject, not accept to use multicultural textbook. That is a problem. And second, weakness of critical thinking training, especially a mechanism of producing prejudice and conflict. To teach history, to teach the current situations, it's okay, but at the same time, we need to give a skills and knowledge to the student how to create peace and why violence occurred. The mechanism is a most important conceptual knowledge to prevent the next conflict. So this kind of uh, issues and knowledge are weak in the textbook and also the in real classes. So this is a local curriculum a weakness because of the school-based uh, curriculum, I think. And case three, that is the last uh, case uh, for the 2006, local citizenship education. This is Jakarta case, PLKJ, uh, study of life and environment education subject in Jakarta. And that aim is fostering a good citizens. And contents is like this, uh, administration of the city of Jakarta, and people's social at attitude and social uh, school rules, character building, public facilities, traffic regulations, and common order, a natural environment and social culture environment, and environmental uh, cleanliness, and food and fire, uh, food and fire prevention, and protection from the misuse of tobacco and drugs, and personal safety and security science and technology, residence, city plan, housing, environmental pollution, energy saving, and parks. So this is, uh, this is from, started from the 1994, and 2006 also continuously uh, implemented in many schools. So local curriculum, uh, in Jakarta, they have a local citizenship education as a local curriculum, but this is very unique in other cities and in other schools, it is not so popular. But this kind of uh, local curriculum is a little bit popular in England and USA. And England have a place-based curriculum and USA have a local-based uh, local -based curriculum, local curriculum, and they, uh, England and USA's researchers emphasize and teachers emphasize the importance of citizenship education based of locality. So local citizenship education is very good uh, topic of theme for modern local IES. And it has a high potential, I think, to convey to students the image of beautiful city Jakarta as a future community goal. So future community goal is most, not most, very important uh, things. So I want to ask you all, if we have a time, uh, we can discuss a lot, but do you have future goal for your community? Have you ever imagined how we want to develop our local area? I have ever visited Malawi in Africa. And that time I have a one, one training sessions to the Malawi teachers. That time also I asked to the trainees and trainers in the universities and they, they experienced at some years as a teachers too. And the university students, uh, they trained, they are training. And I asked them, have you ever think about the future of your local area? school area and they said never they imagine local uh, national development but national level not my school area so i said i recommend request to them i give you 10 minutes please discuss and think about your own local areas development should be sustainable local 
development, make balance economic and human beings and nature. So without this kind of future goal, imaginations, image, without image, we cannot create. And we cannot share this beautiful goal with students. If we don't have goal, we cannot achieve the goal. So this Pierre Kaji is very, I have a high potential. The next one, to convey to students they are one of the members uh, to develop it. So membership, I am a member of the community. I have rights first, and I have responsibility. I love them and they love me. And I am a member, and as a member, I want to, not have to, I want to contribute to all members of the community's happiness. So this is a citizenship education. And number three, helping them to realize, uh, helping students to realize their responsibility as a good citizen, so same things. And four, providing them with essential knowledge and critical thinking and skills required for sustainable development. As I said, sustainable development is very important, not only for the economic, but to survive forever for human beings with happiness. So some lost our goal, happiness. Sometimes we, we misunderstand, misorient to the materialistic, uh, the European, American, Japanese people's materialistic, that we should remember what is our final goal, sustainable development. So this kind of citizenship and with local areas and with lab, we can remind sustainable development for locality. And many countries, including Japan, uh, previously, they focus on the national economic development only, and then the social development at national level. And now, Many researchers emphasize the global citizenship and global sustainable development. But who live in global area? Where is a global? This local area, the place I live, is one of the area of globe. It means if we do the local sustainable development and everybody do the local sustainable development, then naturally, automatically, we can reach the global sustainability. <laughs> so that is a logic. Then, after we understand the high possibility of this PLKJ local curriculum as a local citizenship education, but reality is like this. A student parents' perception in 1999 and 2014, I, I compare the same questionnaire's outcome. And so this is a data, 1989 uh, students answers this number, uh, around 80 and 14 and 69, not so many because very difficult to survey in Jakarta now. In other places easy, but in Jakarta very difficult to be accepted and they are not welcome outside and researchers. Anyway, so rank of Perukas is a time. So I asked which subject is important, uh, useful or not. The PLKJ is 9th and 14th, 11th. So they said very success, uh, very useful, and 45%, useful 55%, 1999. So even they said this is very useful and or useful, but <laughs> after 15 years, they said you very useful, just 1.4%, and useful is 42%. Uh, but very big decreasing. <laughs> so I was so uh, disappointed. And next parents, uh, parents also I, I asked. So from the number, uh, very difficult to generate from this small number. I know as a research, it is, so I, I cannot write paper from this data, but I can just use our classes. The lack of pair uh, by parents, uh, seventh and, <laughs> and 11th, uh, 2014th. 
And they said very useful, 20%, 27, and useful, seven, uh, 67. So they, 1999, the time they, they, they accept it is okay, but after 15, very small number, just, but bigger than students, 13 persons and 66, uh, 36 persons teach, uh, parents said very useful or useful. So they don't understand the possibility of pair cardi. And uh, I, I add more data and prefer, so I ask many other questions to students. I prefer the future work locations is for foreign country, 42%, and inside nation, but not Jakarta, 34%. And only 20% students want to live and work in the future. And the reasons of selections job and contribution to the student uh, families, 60, uh, 68. And interesting, 66. Contribution to nations, 56. And contribution to the Jakarta, 40%, like this. And I like Jakarta very much. It's just 60, uh, 36 point percent. And the reasons, I have family here. I have friends here. And local activity is very small and just emotional attached, 29% history and traditional culture and 30, 30 percent. Like this, this is a reality of the students. So I was so surprised that so many people, students really want to go out to foreign country to, to work and go out to Jakarta, even they have family and they uh, somehow they, they feel attachment in Jakarta, but they don't have a strong motivation to contributions and work there. And I don't say, I don't say they should not move out from their local area. I don't say it. I, I can't say, it. but uh, even they select the other places, but uh, at least they, if they can understand how to love and how to feel contribution and responsibility to the place they live, it is okay. So even they don't feel love to the original hometown, but if they could get some feel attachment and some, uh, can I say, how can I say, get, get our, our membership, the resident places, it's okay, I think. And back to the parents, and prefer future work location, how they discuss with the students, I wanted to ask. So they said they prefer uh, their children uh, work in foreign country, 20%. Wow. And inside nation, 60%. Inside Java, 60%. Jakarta, 0%. This also surprising for me. Uh, as a Parents, as a parent, uh, why I can say like this? So the parents, parents think children should go out from Jakarta. Maybe there are so many obstacles to live. Anyway, then the what parents want children learn from schools. So knowledge, uh, the highest is global competency, eighty percent and mana 76 and knowledge and ex for exam 73 and local attachment and traditional culture is just 50 and 40. Of course, if we combine with important part, uh, almost the same, but more they emphasize and prefer the knowledge or exam or local global competencies. And prefer future work locations, a teacher, this is a teacher. The teacher is very small, so we cannot, totally we cannot generate that, but just to see the tendencies at time one school, general public school. So preferred future work location inside the nation, 100%. So there is a big gap. And what parents want their children learn from, oh, sorry, sorry, this is not parents, a teacher. If teacher, uh, so teacher also really want uh, their children learn from the school global competency, moral, and manner. And next is the national attachment. Local attachment is very low, 
and tra traditional culture is 41%. So I think uh, if we do this kind of research in other places, uh, the, the result will be changed or different, I think. And before the COVID-19, I survey as a social identity and individual identity and local attachment in 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 Bukitingi, Pontianak, Jakarta, Bukashi, and Jok Jakarta, and Ambon. So I, I survey in different uh, places and I, I I could understand, identify, statistically, they have a different level of national identity and local identity and sense of contributions and a different image and different future dreams too. So Indonesia is very diverse. So reality and challenges in Jakarta and students have considerable inter interest in work abroad. And this is summary. The parents and teachers hope they will work within the country, not in Jakarta. And the student local attachment and sense of contribution responsibility is low. And without local attachment, students are at high risk of identity crisis in big cities, I think. And without experience in self-motivated contributions to their own community, uh, which based on local identity, students will not be able to effectively contribute in other places either. So that is my uh, tentative uh, plan, uh, contribute, uh, conclusions. Uh, so this is a trial, this is a training, how to feel attachment, how to improve our uh, right and responsibility sense in the locality and how to create local community network and social, uh, social. This kind of initial training, lack of initial training, uh, I wonder how we can become a good adult and citizens in, in any places. So as a principle of local curriculum development, uh, there is a very simple principles. Uh, curriculum with local, by local, for local. <laughs> very easy. With, by, for. So this local curriculum development, uh, if we can develop this kind of local cur curriculum, then they can uh, get the idea first. This Okay, my, this is my liver and I have, I love my liver and this is my liver and you have your liver and there are other river in the world. I mean, I can take care of my liver. You can take care of your liver. Then I can understand how valuable of your liver and your attachment to the river. And I understand how many peoples and global peoples love their liver and try to keep beauty. So my liver, your liver, world liver, my city, my town, your town and world town. And this is a step to gradually understand a local citizenship. Okay. So this is a theoretical uh, conceptual conclusions. So local based curriculum. Merit, there is a merit and demerit. Uh, depend on the developer and structure. So from the previous uh, historical uh, cases, experiences, success or controversial cases, we need to find some theory so this is some theory. And if developer, let's think about developer together. If developer is a provincial level, province level, prefecture level. If the developer, local curriculum developer is a school level, what is the merit and demerit? And merit, province level, and big support 
This is big support. When school ability are low. So when 94 curriculum started, of course, every school principals, bingo, confused. What is, what is a local, modern local? And there are many beautiful scenes I saw at that time, 1992, 1993, before the modern local, there is a very hot discussion on newspaper. And uh, the Tashi Kumaraya is a starting point of the uh, pilot project to develop the modern local at the time. And I visited the, the town and stayed several weeks. And I, I saw the, the very old persons in front of the house. They, uh, he, had, they, he prepared chair for, for anybody. And his, his thought, the chair and with whiteboard and evening several teachers visited him to discuss and to get a comment or advice what is modern local and the the, the old person actually is a former principal of one school and he had a big ambitious to develop and to improve the uh, modern local in the local area they don't he, he didn't have any any role, any budget, any any payment, the voluntary. So he was great. And he every evening uh, to, to teach about the modern local in, to, to the different teachers. So to improve the teacher's ability, it's very important to start a new curriculum. If there is a voluntary people in everywhere, and the volunteer people have to really understand the curriculum development system and theories. It's okay, but it is very difficult, I guess. So if the school and the teacher doesn't have enough ability, if province level board of education creates a local curriculum, it is big support. This is merit, but we could see the demerit too. Difficult to catch the local needs, the really local needs village or town and children's life areas because each province ha have a uh, how can you say is uh, the big cities and uh, board of education usually in the big city uh, central central of the province and they cannot easily catch the real life of the children especially in the uh Laman at our the small islands so they don't know their real life. So they, they cannot uh, catch the reality and cannot create appropriate way of teaching and content and how to teach too. Next school. So two, this is a 1994 curriculum. And 2006 school-based curriculum that time, a school are developer. And high merit is a high possibility for good correspond for local needs and issues. And they don't have any compulsory in the province level. So school can consider the student's real life and needs and future with their eyes, with their perspective and dreams. That is a merit, but the merit is difficult. Uh, in the case, teachers' motivations and ability are low. So this problem are decreasing. This problem means that mismatch of the ethnic group and religious group between the teacher and the students. If teachers are not local residents, they cannot understand their real feeling about their own ethnic identity. So this is a uh, difficulties and sometimes the teachers move from the city to the rural area and put this uh, so their motivation sometimes uh, low and the student also catch that. So in that case, the local curriculum development is very, very difficult and not so suitable for the students. And next things matter is structure matter. Uh, so how to create curriculum so the first time, 2000, uh, uh, so 1994, so that there is an independent subject as I calculated. There is a merit and demand. 
and they can create, develop the educational activity related locality systematically from the beginning easier and nearest things uh, until the high school. So they can suit for the develop the developmental march and also the systematically they can create a one I how can say independent subject that is a very very not easy but very good systematic subject but the merit is if there is a one subject there is a one teacher conducted so before 1994, there are no modern local teacher. So the teacher shift from the specialty. Economic teacher, geography teacher, public line teacher move to a change the specialty to the modern local. So they complain a lot. And some teachers really love new curriculum, but at the time, the different demerit are there. In other subject, the teacher who don't care, who don't need to teach modern local, they don't know anything. They don't not try to find relationship between the local content and their own traditional subject. So mathematics teacher, science teacher, language teacher, I don't care because modern local is there and modern local teacher teach subject, that's all. So they cannot Student cannot get the connections with a traditional curriculum subject. So there are merit and merit. And next one, from the 2006 and 2000, uh, until now, they can insert locality to every subject. If, if they cannot establish the independent subject, they can connect to the local topics. So this kind of structure, a teacher, merit is teacher. Every teacher can try to find relations with local matters in every subject. That is very good. But if it is not compulsory, they don't do that, I think. And the merit is difficult to study local issues intensively and systematically. So this is a, a difficulty. So we need, as a teacher, we need a model or guideline how to understand the local needs, local reality, and local future, and what kind of skills students need, and how to connect to my subject. If there are no stream, and if they are not forced or admired that effort, they don't, they can't it. That is a memory. Hopefully you can catch this kind of, uh, my <laughs> empirical uh, kind of theory, please utilize for new curriculum development. And after that, 2000 curriculum 2013, uh, from that curriculum, I, so sorry to say, but I feel so tired to catch up the new curriculum in Indonesia because too many new things and not so sure and confusing in the <laughs> Lapagan. So from that time, my motivation to catch up new curriculum is decreasing. But anyway, new curriculum 2013 have started and all school compulsory from 2017. This is officially said, as I don't know. And modern local was integrated to the other related art subject. And if the school prepare well, they can implement it. it that, that's all from the curriculum book. And what is the real intention of this changing? My, my, my question, what is our real intentions? What ministry want to do? If you prepare, please, Shirakan. <laughs> but if you can relate, please integrate. But don't care, don't control, don't manage. What is the intentions? And I, I discuss with many teachers, one said, the government tried to decrease the local uniqueness. So after uh, 1998, the centralizations, localizations, and demo democratization started. 
rapidly, but this curriculum moved shift again. So the curriculum like this, swinging, centralized and uh, localized. So this is a kind of nationalized donkey as a local uniqueness. Okay, I see. And as a teacher said, this is the best way to create curriculum, which really based on locality. So systematically and structurally, and from the developer's per perceptions, if teacher have the motivation, strong motivation and ability, this is the best way, one said. Of course, the teacher who live in urban area says like this. So current situations still, this is my feeling and not based on the real broad research. So just listen to as my comment, confusing <laughs> people who whom I met and discuss about the modern local, confusing, misunderstanding or less responsibility because of many problems. This had no counting of the local subject teaching, even they tried to teach. The previous local curriculum was variable. So first they motivated to continuously teach the same local, uh, modern local, but suddenly th that time could not be counted as a teaching period or time because principals don't care about that. They don't uh, accept the variable things for that schools and less motivations and skill less skills for integrations. Still, they wonder how integrate to mathematics. So of course, this is very, very difficult. In my class in the graduate schools, I, I teach this local curriculum in s -Dua. So African peoples, my, my, in my class, 80, 90% are foreign students and African peoples, they try to, the last task assignment is to create a local curriculum in my, after, after my class and they present that. But if their specialty is mathematics, they really uh, complain <laughs> the difficulties, how to create a modern local, uh, local curriculum related to the mathematics. So we need to develop. The, the integration theory. And uh, so it's almost time to start the discussion time. And this is one request from Saida Sensei. So how, how do you think? This is not related to the modern local actually, but uh, I, I tried to say something that the condition for success of uh, Gomen Gomen. So sorry. <laughs> so this is, this is about the curriculum 2022 first. So, oh, how do you have some some feeling or comments or ins not inspirations but thanks uh, about the curriculum to uh, Murudeka. So when I saw the Murudeka curriculum, I feel that we always need to see the hidden curriculum, hidden uh, surface beautiful surface no problem the idea but. As a curriculum developer or examiner or researcher and university students, we need to see the hidden curriculum. What happened? Even without intentions, ministry people, they don't think about it, maybe. But there is a hidden curriculum all the time. But we need to be careful and avoid the hidden negative curriculum. So my tentative questions, are like this. Can we, we means, please accept me as a, one of the member of Indonesian. Can we assure the quality of education for all with triple standard? Triple standard, yesterday also I, I mentioned, the so teachers and schools can select 2013 curriculum or simple versions or multi versions. It's mean. There is a three standard now. How we can assure the quality of education? And how can we manage the student various level of competency and needs? Mordeka curriculum said they can independently learn means they can select their way of studying and materials 
content. It is very beautiful. Child-centered learning, that is a world tendency, but actually, child-centered approach is not the best way for every content. Child-centered approach is better rather than traditional way sometimes, but we cannot utilize it all the time. And child-centered approach is in, uh, in curriculum and teaching way is we need to give a big room for the student individuality and competency-oriented. So if there is a slow learner, speed, speedy learner, they can follow their own way. But can, can you do it? in one classroom and competency can if you can, first of all can we really evaluate the competency perfectly or not we can't very difficult because we cannot observe all the time everyone so maximum number for the competency-based curriculum is 20. That is a result of the research in European countries. Over 20 students in one classroom, we cannot observe. We cannot do the formative assessment. It means we cannot do the competency-based learning in one classroom, big classroom. So how the curriculum can assure and manage their competency level within the various students' competency levels and needs and interests? So I wonder that. So the, the saying is beautiful, but in real, what will happen? We need to think about it. And is it the best way? Uh, of course, in high schools, I, I, I really welcome this, this, and Japan also follows. So student, high school students uh, don't need to uh, care the, anymore the course, language course, and science course, and social science, humanities course. This is very, very good. So we need to follow that. But that is a different things. And is it the best way uh, to correspond to the student's needs? So same as a child-centered approach. So modern local also same. In every everywhere, cu curriculum development model or guideline says, think about follow, follow to the student needs. But students can understand or evaluate their needs is the best way for their future or not. Who can understand their needs for their future? Not current students. They can say their demand, their dream, but yes, they can say their needs too, but we cannot say that is the best resource to to select their contents, knowledge, skills to learn in school. And school have a big responsibility to pay back to the society. So not uh, not only for, the, of course, we need to assure the student happiness, but at the same time, we need to think about the sustainability of local and national development so society too. So we need to think, we need to make balance between the student needs, demand, future dream, and social needs, national needs. So this is my question, how can we assure that? And triple standard, if ministry, minister says the Murudeka version is the best curriculum, how? Can you assure the quality of educations with 2013 in rural area? <laughs> in the homepage, I was so surprised. They can get the data from all of the nations. How many schools, which uh, district have, uh, how many schools, elementary schools and junior high school, high school implement the curriculum 13, simple versions or multi versions? And if you if you visit the home base, there is a red zone, Central Java, almost perfectly they conduct implement the 
multiple curriculum. But West and ja Jakarta too, not perfect, but oranges. So 80%, 70, 80% uh, schools can conduct that, implement the newest one and best one, they said. But the out of Java, they are green or almost blue. It means 0% to implement, not, not, not totally zero, but very few schools can implement the newest curriculum. Is it okay for the nations? I, I really worry about that but uh, worry but at the same time optimistic we cannot say the murdeka is the best <laughs> this is a different way if they critique the 2013 curriculum is too heavy for the student it means there are many contents and if and ministry said the te teachers confused to what is a uh, most important content for the students it is not clear but Murudeka curriculum is clear, so they can deepen the, the, the most, uh, most important uh, contents to deep analysis and to the project uh, work and to take many more time for that. But we cannot say project type, project-based learning is uh, suitable for every student, we cannot say. So from the traditional uh, reading and searching and not project one, but student could not broad knowledge. And from the broad knowledge, maybe they can create a new ideas too. So triple standards may be good if the out of Java's peoples suit for the 13 versions. So I also have the different opinions against the Murudeka curriculum implementations current situations. Okay, I need to finish my <laughs> talking a lot. Uh, hopefully you can understand what I examined and present and a school-based curriculum. Uh, please remember school-based curriculum management for the local curriculum, modern local with people, with local community people, by community people teach, and for community people, then easy. And improving teachers' professionalism in everywhere is a key for modern local and also all education activity. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. I okay. hope you have many questions. Okay. Thank you, Ibu Nakaya. What an interesting presentation, Ibu Nakaya. We enjoy your experience and story when you when doing your research from time to time. Uh, now we will move into discussion, question and answer. Hadirin yang kami hormati, selanjutnya adalah sesi tanya jawab. Kepada hadirin dipersilakan mengajukan pertanyaan dengan menekan tombol raise hand ataupun mengetikkan di kolom chat. Di sini sudah ada satu pertanyaan. Uh, via chat dari Ibu Wikan Budi Utami. Uh, kita akan membuka dua pertanyaan terlebih dahulu supaya nanti mungkin bisa langsung dijawab oleh Ibu Nakaya. Apakah ada yang ingin mengajukan pertanyaan secara live? Mungkin bisa menekan tombol raise hand. Baik, kalau belum ada, kita akan menuju ke satu pertanyaan terlebih dahulu. Saya akan membacakan pertanyaannya di sini, Ibu Nakaya. Iya. Yeah. Baik, pertanyaannya adalah, saya pernah melakukan suatu riset kecil tentang muatan lokal yang diajarkan di sekolah pada daerah pesisir, yaitu di Tegal dengan mata pelajaran bahasa Jawa. Hmm. Bahasa Jawa yang digunakan di wilayah Tegal adalah bahasa Jawa yang condong ke Solo. Hmm. Padahal di Tegal sendiri memiliki da bahasa daerah sendiri yang bisa dikembangkan, yaitu bahasa Tegalan. Hmm. Dalam konteks pengembangan kurikulum, menurut Ibu Ayami Nakaya, pengembangan kurikulum muatan lokal pada wilayah tersebut, hmm. apakah lebih baik mengikuti kebijakan di tingkat provinsi atau mengembangkan kurikulum muatan lokal yang menyesuaikan dengan wilayah daerah tersebut? Demikian hmm. pertanyaannya. Terima kasih Ibu Nakaya. Uh, okay. Okay. Terima kasih banyak pertanyaan yang bagus. Eh, Budi, oh, utami -san, utami -san. <laughs> Thank you very much. Eh, ya, yeah. seperti saya sudah bicara, 
uh, ada yang ada yang baik ada yang sisi baik dan tidak baik jadi memang kalau bahasa Jawa menjadi eh, wajib untuk semua anak-anak uh, mungkin mereka merasa dipaksakan belajar atau mungkin tidak sesuai atau bi bisa dikurangi juga motivasi belajar untuk uh, kegiatan untuk mata pelajaran yang lain juga karena iya kan ingat kan <laughs> kalau ada mata pelajaran yang tidak suka <laughs> tidak mau pergi sekolah itu juga jadi menurut saya guru-guru dan -guru, uh, prinsipal uh, Bapak-bapak harus melihat eh, motivasi belajar oleh siswa. Kalau mereka tidak mau belajar bahasa Jawa, harus uh, mengembangkan kurikulum diri sendiri di sekolah, di, di lingkungan saja. Kalau Tetapi, uh, kalau ada pilihan lebih baik, karena seperti di Montaway, kalau anak-anak yang, yang merasa senang sekali, seperti dapat mutiara, uh, uh, dan kalau mereka ingin ingin dapat bahasa yang yang majoriti di masyarakat untuk dapat kerja yang bagus lebih baik atau pacarnya orang Jawa <laughs> mungkin uh, menguasai bahasa Jawa penting bagi siswa. Jadi kalau ada pilihan bisa memilih. Jadi yang yang, yang lebih im, mm, penting itu ada pilihan bagi siswa. Bisa mengerti? Baik, terima kasih Ibu Nakaya. Kalau saya simpulkan berarti melihat motivasi siswa-siswi yang ada dan kemudian ada kehendak untuk memilih bagi siswa-siswi tersebut terkait dengan bahasa. Ya. Baik, baik. Terima kasih Ibu Nakaya. Terima kasih. Uh, ya. Baik, silakan jika ada pertanyaan yang lain. Ini merupakan diskusi yang menarik Ibu Nakaya, baik. Uh, pertanyaan selanjutnya, uh, ada dua pertanyaan, uh, dua hadirin yang raise hand. Yang pertama dari uh, Bapak Donatus Jagom dan yang kedua dari Ibu Lucy Ayu Widowati. Saya persilakan mungkin kepada Bapak Donatus terlebih dahulu untuk boleh mengemukakan pertanyaan. Dipersilakan. Uh, baik, uh, terima kasih atas yes. waktu dan kesempatan yang diberikan. Uh, terima kasih kepada narasumber yang sangat luar biasa, Dr. Ayami Nakaya, dan juga Mbak Tiara, moderator hari ini. Uh, saya saya itu hanya uh, sebagian kecil, bahkan hanya ya 10 sampai 20-an orang tempatan. Nah, ketika kita mau menerapkan uh, kearifan lokal yang ada di daerah setempat, nah ini sedikit mengalami kendala uh, untuk uh, kami di situ. Mungkin dari pengalaman dan juga persoalan-persoalan uh, yang saya lihat banyak sekali yang dialami oleh uh, dokter Ayami ini uh, bisa ya, berbagi dengan uh, yang situasi yang kami alami di sana seperti apa lalu yang cocoknya yang harus kami uh, terapkan di budaya setempat itu seperti apa. Uh, mungkin ini dulu dari saya, saya kembali ke Mbak Tiara, terima kasih. Selamat siang. Baik, terima kasih Pak Donatus untuk pertanyaannya. Baik, Ibu Nakaya, tadi situasinya eh, di Kalimantan Utara, Pak Donatus ini adalah seorang guru di daerah Nunukan. Nah, kesulitannya adalah ingin menerapkan kearifan lokal, namun ada kendala karena sebagian besar daer dari daerah tersebut ini berasal dari daerah lain. Berdasarkan pengalaman dari Ibu, Apakah ada uh, solusi atau hal yang cocok untuk bisa diterapkan dalam situasi seperti ini? Terima kasih banyak, Bapak Donatus. Uh, ya, saya saya sekarang mikir bagaimana ya. Situasi itu juga tertarik, mau tidak tertarik masalahnya besar. Eh, saya mikir mungkin eh, imigrasi orang orang Orang-orang siswa-siswa yang dari luar juga harus Recording tahu uh, budaya tempat setempat. Karena mereka kan tinggal di situ beberapa tahun atau tinggal terus. Jadi tanpa, in progress. tanpa mengerti kebudayaannya, sejarahnya, mereka tidak bisa bikin 
hubungan baik dengan orang-orang tersebut. Jadi supaya mereka bisa uh, ikut kebudayaan dan kadang-kadang bisa memakai kata-kata di daerah, mungkin mereka bisa membuat hubungan baik. Jadi eh, pertama, eh, anak-anak yang dari luar punya motivasi untuk belajar kebudayaan di tersebut. Jadi guru juga. Jadi harus ada kaitannya. Jangan jangan mengajar di kebudayaan akhiri, as, asri. Kebudayaan asri, sejarah saja kan bosan, membosankan. Jadi sejarahnya bagaimana penggalu kehidupan sekarang atau pemikiran mereka atau cara cara membuat hubungan dengan orang lain. Dan sejarahnya eh, mereka harus punya meningkatkan motivasi untuk belajar sejarah dan kebudayaan dan bahasa untuk program, untuk membuat eh, membuat hubungan baik dan juga untuk memikirkan eh, sustainable local development. Jadi untuk mengembangkan kerikmatan lokal harus diskusi dengan orang asli di situ dan juga orang baru di situ bagaimana mereka ingin mengembangkan daerahnya sendiri sebagai tempat mereka tinggal asli atau migrasi itu tidak mas tidak masalah mereka bagaimana mengembangkan uh, mempromosi eh, local sustainable development sempat eh, memakai dongang eh, memakai eh, kebudayaan tersebut atau kurikulum uh, history dan juga mungkin anak-anak uh, di anak, anak asli di situ juga harus tahu kebudayaan dari luar jadi mereka bisa uh, tukar menukar belajar eh, kebudayaan mereka. Jadi seperti merge culture education di situ kan penting. Bagaimana ah, ide saya, Bapak? Baik. Baik, Baik ya. Terima kasih ya. Bagus. Terima kasih banyak atas jawabannya. Baik ya. Kalau saya simpulkan berarti perlunya motivasi untuk menumbuhkan hubungan baik begitu ya tadi juga sudah disampaikan oleh Ibu Nakaya baik terima kasih Ibu Nakaya mungkin selanjutnya kita akan ke uh, Ibu Lucy Ayuwidowati dipersilahkan untuk boleh menyampaikan pertanyaannya terima kasih Mbak Tiara selamat siang Ibu Nakaya selamat siang semuanya uh, saya ingin mengajukan pertanyaan mengenai mau pelajaran muatan lokal. Kebetulan saya juga adalah seorang guru. Sekolah saya ini sekolah swasta yang uh, terdiri dari berbagai multi etnis. Uh, uh, siswa kami itu tidak hanya dari kota Malang, tapi kami juga punya asrama yang uh, di sana tinggal dari uh, Indonesia Timur, Kalimantan, uh, bahkan ada yang dari Sumatera. Nah, ini yang menjadi Permasalahan besar di sekolah kami ini ketika pelajaran bahasa Jawa sebagai pelajaran muatan lokal ini diajarkan ke anak-anak. Nah, sebenarnya kami tujuan kami tujuan muatan lokal sepenangkapan kami adalah untuk mengenalkan budaya lokal dan menumbuhkan cinta pada budaya sendiri. Namun demikian kadang-kadang ada beberapa konsep-konsep pada saat mengajarkan itu yang keliru. Anak-anak dipaksa belajar seperti mata pelajaran yang lain. Nah ini yang menjadi salah, menjadi kesalahan bagi kami dan ini menjadi seperti turun temurun. Bahkan Hmm, untuk perkumpulan misalnya ya perkumpulan guru-guru kami di sini menyebutnya MKMP ini eh, bahkan menggunakan aturan-aturan khusus bahwa siswa ini di kelas tertentu harus mem- mencapai pada keterampilan tertentu misalnya berbahasa Jawa ragam ngoko Inggil nah itu menjadi kesepakatan di MKMP Kota Malang nah Saya ingin bertanya, apakah dengan kurikulum yang baru ini kebebasan untuk memberikan pelajaran muatan lokal kepada anak-anak ini bisakah kami terapkan di sekolah kami dengan siswa yang multi etnis ini ataukah kami harus mengikuti alur yang sudah diberikan oleh pemerintah itu? Mohon diberikan tips-tipsnya. Terima kasih banyak Ibu Nakaya, luar biasa hari ini. Ilmunya sangat bermanfaat bagi kami. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Ibu Lucy. Apakah uh, sudah jelas pertanyaannya Ibu Nakaya? Ya, 
Baik, silakan boleh langsung dijawab, Ibu. Oke. Okay. Ibu Rusi, terima kasih banyak. Susah sekali ya. Saya juga bertanya, itu kalau tidak ikut, <laughs> kalau tidak ikut mata pelajaran uh, bahasa Jawa, nanti di <laughs> bagaimana? Boleh juga? Tidak ada nilai untuk muatan lokal kalau tidak ikut. <laughs> Begitu. <laughs> itu susah ya. <laughs> Terus uh, asesmennya, evaluasinya itu juga ada kriteria atau uji yang khusus jadi semua standardized. Saat ini kami mengusahakan untuk uh, tidak membuat tes yang tertulis, tapi praktik setidaknya bisa berbahasa Jawa, bercakap-cakap dengan temannya, mm -hmm. uh, bisa mungkin mendengarkan lagu Jawa, kemudian tahu artinya, ya masih sebatas itu. Jadi kami tidak bisa mengikuti yang diminta oleh uh, MGMP Kota Malang. Itu, ah, okay, ya. okay. Terima Kalau kasih. begitu baik, <laughs> Mas, masih lumayan baik. <laughs> Jadi, eh, lagi, itu sekali lagi, paling penting motivasi siswa. Jadi, kenapa harus belajar cakapan bahasa Jawa? Itu bukan untuk orang Jawa, itu untuk orang-orang dari uh, dari luar supaya mereka tidak merasa malu dan tidak tidak merasa hinakan oleh orang Jawa di tempat. Nah, orang orang tua tua mungkin sudah tidak ada lagi ya. yang 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 bisa pakainya bahasa Jawa saja mungkin tidak ada lagi tapi mereka kalau memakai kalau generasi muda memakai bahasa Jawa orang tua yang orang Jawa itu merasa dihormati dan bisa apa bisa komunikasi lancar jadi walaupun tidak tidak memakai bahasa yang yang benar saya, saya tidak berani memakai bahasa Jawa dan pasti salah salahnya lebih susah lagi jadi kalau bisa memakai yang yang benar pasti bisa di, dinilaikan atau di, dihormati dan mereka bisa senang bisa senang menyangka eh, orang tua tua yang pakai bahasa Jawa atau orang Jawa tetapi terbalik mereka juga mau memakai bahasa mereka sendiri jadi orang Jawa, siswa Jawa juga harus belajar bahasa yang lain. Jadi kalau ada eh, dari Sumatera, dari dari tidak tahu yang dari luar, mungkin bisa tukar. Jadi yang tadi juga sama kan, dari multicultural education. Jadi kalau orang Jawa juga dipaksakan belajar bahasa yang lain, jadi you know, itu tidak bisa dipaksakan, tetapi supaya mereka memperlihatkan menghormati kebudayaan yang lain kan bagus jadi orang Jawa juga eh, harus belajar harus coba memakai bahasa yang lain di Kalimantan atau di Sumatera eh, kalau saya macam bagaimana yang yang easy easy saja yang simple saja tidak sampai ke tingkat bahasa Jawa tetapi kalau eh, waktu mulai mata pelajaran kelas bahasa Jawa mereka bilangnya eh, orang Jawa memakai bah, bukan bahasa Jawa bahasa Kalimantan atau Sumatera orang Sumatera Kalimantan harus pakai bahasa Jawa kalau <laughs> mulai seperti itu kan mereka bisa motivasi sedikit dan jangan uh, terpaksa uh, menguasai bahasa Jawa yang benar dan yang tingkatnya tinggi <laughs> Nah, apakah bisa apa ya kasih kesempatan bergaul dengan orang orang tua tua di sekolah jadi invite orang tua oh, baik itu uh, mungkin ini jadi masukan juga buat hmm. saya saran juga hmm. buat kami hmm. untuk uh, melibatkan orang tua juga hmm. dalam mengajak anak berkomunikasi. Hmm. Terima kasih sekali. Iya, 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 iya. Terima, Terima kasih. Sekali. Baik. Terima kasih Ibu Lucy dan Ibu Nakaya untuk penguatannya terkait ide-idenya tentang muatan lokal bahasa Jawa. Selanjutnya uh, akan mungkin pertanyaan terakhir pada sesi kali ini uh, karena waktunya sudah mendekati jam 1. Mungkin kalau ada pertanyaan yang masih ingin ditanyakan, kita akan 
uh, bisa memberikan pertanyaan via email begitu ya Ibu Nakaya. Mungkin kita akan ke pertanyaan terakhir, uh, saya persilakan kepada Ibu Tenia Kurniawati untuk boleh uh, on cam kalau memungkinkan dan menyampaikan pertanyaan. Oh, kan, kan. Terima kasih Ibu untuk kesempatan Perkenalkan nama saya Tenia Saya mahasiswa TEP Angkatan 2021 Dan kebetulan Saya memang mm, Akan melakukan riset uh, Disertasi saya Tentang pengembangan uh, Kurikulum muatan lokal Nah nanti rencananya Saya mau mengembangkan Model lokal area based Kurikulum dengan pendekatan project project learning untuk meningkatkan performa belajar bagi pebelajar di Kabupaten Tambro yaitu di Papua Barat. Jadi di Papua Barat ini belum ada muatan lokal yang dikembangkan secara khusus dan serius oleh pemerintah daerah. Kebanyakan itu mereka dikembangkan tingkat sekolah. Nah, saya ini rencananya mau mening- mengembangkan tingkat kabupaten. Nah, kabupatennya saya itu kebetulan mempunyai keunikan yang yang nggak dimiliki oleh daerah-daerah lain. Jadi dalam satu kabupaten biasanya kan hanya ada satu suku ya. Nah di tempat saya ini ada lima suku besar yang otomatis bahasanya beda, budayanya beda. Jadi dalam satu kabupaten itu mempunyai suku yang bahasanya ngomongnya beda, terus tari-tariannya beda, eh, apa ya? Kalau eh, lagu-lagunya itu juga beda. Nah, terus tradisinya juga mempunyai kebeda, ke, 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 keberagaman. Nah, saya tertarik untuk mengangkat untuk menjadi sebuah pembelajaran yang yang memang permanen ya. <tuh> Karena supaya tujuannya supaya melestarikan kearifan lokal agar anak-anak ke depan di tengah era globalisasi ini mereka tetap uh, tahu budayanya. Karena uh, mulai sekarang banyak uh, ini ya sudah mulai luntur kebudayaan yang <tuh> yang orang tua dulu sudah nggak di lestarikan anak-anaknya, nah itu saya kembangkan. Terus selain budaya, saya juga mau memberikan sentuhan terkait konservasi. Karena kabupaten saya di Tambro ini kan daerah pegunungan yang hutannya primer dan memang sudah dimendeklarasikan sebagai kabupaten konservasi karena hutannya hampir masih 80 persen masih hutan alami dan sudah bupati kami dulu sudah konferensi ke luar negeri juga mendeklarasikan bahwa ini memang hutan yang harus dilindungi karena ini paru-paru dunia. Nah, konservasi selain konservasi hutan juga ada konservasi laut. Jadi tempatnya saya ada laut, ada pesisir, pesisir ada penyu, penyu belimbing yang tidak dimiliki di daerah lain. Jadi penyu ini dia bertelur di Tamro di Papua, tetapi dia cari makannya di California Amerika. Nah, ya keren banget kan? Ya. Dan ini memang ini ada penyu belimbing kalau nggak percaya silakan di searching itu memang adanya di Tamro di Papua Barat dan dia memang uh, dia kalau apa apa jalan itu langsung California dan itu memang sudah WWF sudah menetap di sana untuk sampai ngasih ini apa elemen di penyunya itu memang ternyata betul saat di, dievaluasi memang betul jadi mereka bertelur di tempat kami cari makannya di California nah Kearifan lokal yang seperti itu yang akan saya kembangkan menjadi kurikulum yang nantinya saya patenkan. Ya, mungkin saya nanti karena saya kebetulan di sana menjadi kepala bidang SMP, saya punya tanggung jawab untuk bagaimana um, mutu pembelajaran bisa jalan tetap dengan memperhatikan kearifan lokal. Nah, akhirnya saya berniat untuk mengembangkan uh, model kurikulum apa muatan lokal ya, tetapi dia apa dengan model Uh, lokal area base kurikulum dan nanti saya memang nggak bisa kerja sendiri saya berkolaborasi dengan banyak elemen elemen LSM budaya LSM konservasi nah yang saya tanyakan kepada ibu ibu pematerik um, menurut ibu ketika saya mau mengembangkan kurikulum budaya tamro berbasis konserva- konservasi ini terus dengan apa ya apa sentuhan project based learning karena supaya dia ada kebaharuan untuk anak-anak mempersiapkan abad 21 apakah masih relevan 
<laughs> untuk untuk penelitian saya terus kira-kira ibu bisa memberikan masukan kira-kira model apa yang tepat untuk memperkuat penelitian saya itu supaya dia mempunyai nilai yang tinggi gitu ada kebaruan-kebaruan gitu mungkin itu yang bisa saya sampaikan terima kasih untuk waktu yang sudah diberikan selamat siang ya terima kasih sekali ibu Tenia sungguh satu insight dan juga kondisi yang baru untuk kita semua juga tahu dan paham ya tadi tentang uh, penyu blimbing itu tadi. Baik, Ibu Nakaya, tadi pertanyaannya adalah mengenai apakah masih relevan pengembangan berbasis konservasi dengan sentuhan project based learning. Kemudian hmm. hal apa yang bisa dilakukan untuk memperkuat uh, project-nya Ibu Tenia ini sehingga hmm. bisa menghasilkan kebaruan. Begitu Ibu Nakaya. Oke, okay. terima kasih banyak. Project, uh, project based learning it uh, pass. Very good, very good, very good, bagus. Karena di Jepang juga banyak. Uh, kemarin kan saya menjelaskan tentang pemotan lokal, kurikulum lokal di uh, kurikulum lokal di Jepang. Uh, di tingkat SMA banyak project based learning. Jadi siswa mungkin uh, dari SD juga bisa uh, yang yang project yang kecil. Jadi pertama siswa menuriti mereka sendiri. Jadi wawancara dengan orang-orang di, di kesempatan uh, government, local government dan uh, yang punya saya tidak tahu industri atau yang orang yang yang mau mengembangkan daerah. Jadi anak-anak wawancara di di luar sekolah atau sekolah bisa invite, bisa minta datang dari dari luar. Jadi orang uh, anak-anak uh, lewat wawancara mereka sendiri membuat bagaimana. Future local development. Jadi bagaimana mengembangkan lokal uh, daerah sendiri eh, dengan materi apa di bidang apa dan bisa bagaimana bisa memanfaatkan kebudayaan atau sejarah atau ide-ide dari dari tempat sumba, eh, tempat eh, tempat tempat tinggal. Jadi ano, tinyasan saya uh, sangat setuju membuat project based learning sebagai matan lokal. Jadi eh, pertama memang eh, guru-guru dan tinyasan harus uh, mengkoleksi data-data resources apa yang bisa digunakan nanti untuk membuat local development planning untuk siswa. Jadi project based learning seharusnya sustainable local development dengan uh, bahan atau kebudayaan di tempat. Bisa mengerti? Ya. Jadi walaupun ada di masuku, tidak usah mengajar semua. Ya, memang itu tergantung siswa. Jadi siswa dari dari lima suku kan <laughs> akhirnya. Jadi siswa memikir, jadi metakognitif itu penting. Metakognitif artinya bukan belajar saja sebagai tradisional. Mereka bukan belajar atau melestarikan saja. Mereka mem- memanfaatkan kebudayaan untuk eh, identitas diri sendiri, untuk mengembangkan lokal. Jadi kalau kurang tahu menggunai eh, kebudayaan daerah, eh, to, tradisional atau wawasan, nanti eh, tidak kalau tidak bukan lupa <laughs> eh, to knowledge nanti uh, siswanya tidak bisa make balance nih untuk buat balance seimbang dan ekonomik dan nature ekologi dan mereka happiness well, well, well being jadi mereka sendiri memikir apa yang mereka punya sebagai resource untuk mengembangkan daerah sustainable sustainable bisa mengerti? Jadi guru-guru jangan siap semua. <laughs> Lepas hmm. saja mereka. Wawan, hey, silakan wawancara. Resource-nya di sana. Orang-orang bisa diwawancara ini di sini. Hmm, Seperti itu. Terima okay. kasih, Bu. Iya. Iya. Terima kasih. <laughs> Baik, terima kasih Ibu Tenia Baik. dan Ibu Nakaya untuk di, jawabannya. Iya, di chat banyak mungkin pertanyaannya. Iya, baik Ibu. Ya, karena... Ada beberapa pertanyaan itu. Iya, baik. Mungkin karena waktunya ini sudah habis, Ibu. Ini sepertinya pada antusias sekali untuk bertanya tentang materi ini. Mungkin nanti bisa email ke Ibu Nakaya begitu ya, Ibu. 
Ah, oke, ah, oke. Okay, okay. Saya tunggu. Okay. Baik, baik. Terima kasih sekali Ibu Nakaya ya. dan juga para hadirin. Baik, seluruh peserta yang kami hormati, maka dapat kita simpulkan berdasarkan paparan dari Ibu Nakaya bahwa lokal kurikulum atau muatan lokal di Indonesia ini memang memiliki tantangan, namun juga kesempatan yang besar untuk dapat berkembang dalam mengembangkan kompetensi global, keterampilan, dan karakter siswa-siswi di berbagai daerah di Indonesia yang memiliki berbagai keunikan dan latar belakang dengan tidak mengesampingkan kebutuhan siswa dan bagian dari kebudayaan. Berdasarkan sesi tanya-jawab yang dilakukan, juga didapatkan kondisi dari Malang, Tegal, Kalimantan Utara, dan Papua Barat, sehingga dapat disimpulkan bahwa hal terpenting untuk mengajarkan muatan lokal kepada siswa adalah menumbuhkan motivasi pada diri siswa dan juga siswa memahami tujuan dari pembelajaran muatan lokal sehingga dapat tercipta sustainable lokal kurikulum. Alhamdulillah kita telah sampai di penghujung acara. Terima kasih banyak kepada Associate Profesor Ayami Nakaya yang telah berbagi, Bapak Dr. Henry Praherdiono MPD selaku Ketua Departemen Teknologi Pembelajaran, Kemudian Bapak Debbie Kuswandi, MPD, selaku Korprodi Teknologi Pembelajaran, Ibu Saida Ulfa, PhD, dan juga para dosen yang saat ini hadir, serta para mahasiswa yang telah menyimak materi mengenai lokal kurikulum dari awal sampai akhir. Semoga banyak ilmu yang didapat untuk membuka wawasan kita bersama mengenai lokal kurikulum ataupun muatan lokal. Saya Karunia Tiara Fani, mewakili panitia yang bertugas menyampaikan mohon maaf atas salah kata dan perbuatan. Akhir kata, terima kasih dan salam sejahtera. Terima kasih Bu Nakaya. Terima kasih Ibu Nakaya. Terima kasih banyak Ibu ya. Tiara, terima kasih banyak. Ya. Terima kasih. Semoga nanti suatu saat bisa berkunjung langsung ke Indonesia Ibu. Iya, 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 iya. Semoga bisa bertemu langsung semua. Ya, jadi sebetulnya masih banyak ya teman-teman lain yang fokus ke kurikulum seperti Ibu. Jadi mudah-mudahan tahun depan.